All right, so we're back. This is video three of our basic server configuration setup videos. Um, this video, before we join a computer to a domain, we want to configure a DHCP server. Now, typically, well, a lot of people in home environments run like just a, a router. The router usually handles all the DHCP stuff. But like in my house and in any sort of business environment, you typically, if you're running a server, that server is going to be handling DHCP, which hands out um, dynamic IP addresses to clients out there. So before we try to join the computer to the domain, let's go ahead and just make sure we set up the DHCP server here on this machine. Um, that way, the client computers can easily grab an IP address and get the correct IP information. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and uh, let's break out server manager, shall we? And you can get it here, or I think it's in here too, right there. So, all right, here's server manager. We're under roles. We want to add a role. It's collecting all the data here. Like, here's what you got. Blah 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 blah. Let's add a role. And we'll worry about all this stuff later. Come on. All right. What we want to do is set up DHCP. Next. Next. All right. Select the network connections that DHCP server will use for clients, and this is the IP address. This machine parent domain is cool.local preferred DNS server IP. Okay, um, we don't want to. We want to change this because if we leave this here, each client machine is going to try to use its own computer as a DHCP or as a um, as a DHCP server. So what we want to do is change this to this server's IP. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm just curious what's going to happen. It does say valid. I wonder if it will convert it to now. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and punch in our server IP here. So it's 10.2.0.15, I believe. Validate. I'm just wondering if it will. Um, in fact, let's see something. Uh, 10, oh, 10, 0, 2, 15. Dope. 10 dot 0 dot 2. Yeah, let's validate that one. All right, valid. An alternate one. We're not going to do an alternate one at the moment. One will be fine. In the end, you'll probably want to do a backup one, but that's if you're running a couple of DHCP servers. So. All right, we'll hit next. Wins is not required. Um, I kind of want Wins running on this thing. We'll, we'll do it without for now. It helps with uh, name resolution when you're using UNC paths like this, SD01, and then you hit the backslash, it will autofill some stuff. But uh, so, anyways, all right. Here's a scope. This is a this is going to be a range of IPs that's this server's willing to hand out. This scope name, let's just call it uh, Cool Scope. Stuff that's easy to remember, so you remember where you put it here, and then how it actually affects us. All right, starting IP, we're going to do 10.0.2. Let's start at 100. 10. Dot, oops, dot 0. Dot 2. Dot, let's do 200. So that's going to give us 100 computers or 100 IP addresses to give devices, printers, scanners, if they're network scanners, and so on. Uh, subnet type, wired, at least for eight days. Uh, duration will be eight days. Okay, I guess you could change that. All right, activate scope. Yes, we want to activate it. Subnet mask is correct. Uh, def default gateway is optional. We're gonna we're gonna throw in here. Um, what was our default gateway that VirtualBox gave us? Uh, it is ten zero two two. So we'll just pop that in there. Okay. Next, enable DHCP v six. Uh, let's disable it because we're not worrying about that at the moment. Um, and right here, let's see. Use current credentials. We can use that. Let's let's use some uh, alternate credentials, shall we? Let's use the domain admin one that I created, just because we're cool like that. All right, what was my password? I think it was that. Credentials cannot be verified because I'm a loser. Um, all right, let's just use administrator then. Uh, I guess we could just use that one. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, skip authorization of the HCP server. And, and, all right, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's hit next. Okay, and that's just to run down and install. It's very simple, really, actually. And even to manage, it, it's very simple. 
where I work now, we, they do a lot of DHCP reservations, even for printers and stuff. So um, it, it's pretty nice in a big environment to do reservations, but not for client PCs. We don't do reservations, but uh, printers and devices like that. All right. What was I mean? All right. Still complaining that Windows automatic updates are enabled. I'm not worried about that at the moment. Okay, we're back here. I had to pause it and take care of some things at the house too. But uh, let's see. All right, so we have the DHCP server set up. Let's make sure here that everything's working. Everything's good to go. Okay. Scope is, yep, there we go. Address pool, address leases. All right, so I fired up the Windows 7. I restarted that machine. Uh, where's that? Okay. Fired this thing up, and you can see here this DHCP, per, uh, DHCP man, I'm tired. DHCP server handed out and leased out this uh, IP address to this machine, and we can verify that. And actually, let's do um, all, so we can see the DNS server too. All right, so it's using the 10.0.2.15 as a DHCP server and the DNS server, which is this server here. All right, so that's what we wanted to do. Now, now let's join this thing to this domain. Let's bring back up Active Directory users and computers. Minimize that one. All right, here's Active Directory users and computers. Remember what I said is when we join a computer to the domain, it's going to end up right here in the computer's OU by default. So what we're going to do is change settings here on the client PC. We want to change it from a work group to cool.local. And then um, my dog's hungry. She's bothering me. wants food. So what we're going to do is go ahead and hit OK. As long as it uh, has the correct DNS server and um, can see the server and everything, you'll be presented with the dialog like this. It's asking, hey, all right, well, the network saying, all right, hey, I'll join you to the domain, but you got to verify that you're a domain admin, that you have rights. So that way just nobody can walk in and join to the domain. So we're going we're gonna to go, since it's already going to be using the cool.local credentials. Cool it out. Cool it out. That's my dog. Cool.local credentials, what we're going to do is um, go ahead and log in with the administrator. I, I don't remember the password for my, my account. Actually, here, that's a good one. If you ever need to reset a password, just go like this, reset, and hit OK. All right, so my password's changed. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use that one. See Davis, and let's see. There you go. Welcome to the cool.local domain. So now, all right, it says you must restart for the settings to take effect. And I bet you, let's see. If we go over here, hit F5, there it is, client PC1. Now, typically what you would do is, you know, before restarting, you can go ahead and drag this thing to wherever the machine is. I'm going to say that this is my computer as an IS person. So I'm going to drag it into the ISOU. So in the ISOU, we have two technicians and then so far one PC in there. We're going to go ahead and restart. I'm going to pause it while this thing restarts. All right, we're back here. It's restarted. Sorry about that. You're going to hear my dogs chomping down on dog food behind me, but you'll live. So let's go ahead. Now, here's an important part, too. By default, right away, it's still wanting to log in to the local machine. We don't want that, so we need to switch user. And here, and you can see by default, it's saying, okay, well, let's try a domain account. If you don't see this here, and you like on older machines, like an XP boxes and stuff, you'll probably still see the local machine name there. And what you would have to do is go domain name, which is cool, backslash, and then you can see right there it switched to whatever I put. So even if I put new domain, backslash, it's going to try to log into new domain. But of course, we want cool and it's already there. So we're just going to put C Davis, log in here, and it's going to set up the profile on this machine under a domain account. So I'm going to pause it for a second. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and check what we're going to do here is actually a couple things. Let's right click on here. It's no longer a member of a work group. It's we are now part of a domain. And the way the 
users folder looks is here's my local account I just put that so it stands out and here's our domain account so that was pretty simple it's just a matter of making sure you have the DHCP server set up Active Directory and DNS um, once you have that all set up you can then join a domain join a client to the domain uh, next up video is probably I'm not sure yet but um, it may have something to do with group policies it may have a little bit more in-depth on DNS settings uh, configuration actually we're gonna keep this kind of basic so we'll see where it flows stay tuned